Do you believe that what's been done can't be undone? It depends, doesn't it? I can tie my shoe and then I can untie it, but I can't go back and undo the first tie. So while I can reverse the action of tying my shoe, I can't untie tying my shoe. Clear as mud, right? To undo something, you basically reverse the effect of what you did. Oh, how many of us would love to reverse the effect of things we have said or done in the past. One of my favorite commands on a keyboard is undo. Wouldn't that be nice to have in real life situations? What did I just do? Undo, undo. Programmers can do this when they roll back commands. It's like they never happened. Well, we can't roll back or hit undo in life. There are consequences to our actions and our choices. We may not be able to hit the undo key or even call for a redo like we did when we were little, but we can try to reverse the effects or make things right. God works through us and our circumstances to redeem moments and seasons. I'm so very thankful he does. I've experienced that in my own life. What the enemy meant for evil or maybe something I chose to do was forgiven. Grace was extended and over and over something beautiful grew as a result. What was broken was mended. What was lost was restored. God meets us in our every need, failure and fear with provision, grace and love. I love how God met Adam and Eve in the garden after they sinned. They tried to cover themselves. They tried to undo a little of their shame. God met them with tunics of animal skin to wear. Blood was shed to cover their sin. The world is still under the curse of sin, but for those in Christ, we are now redeemed and covered by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus' death on the cross brings us back into fellowship with the Father. What was done in the garden was undone on the cross. The good news now is that the hope we have because of Jesus is that one day he will come again. And one day to come, all things will be made new. Revelation 21, 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. This is not describing a fixer upper heaven and earth. This is a made new heaven and earth, a new Jerusalem, a new earth, no longer plagued by the powers of evil, sin, and death. The presence of God will very much be with us and every tear will be wiped from our eyes. Can you even imagine no more death, sorrow, crying, or pain? What a day that will be. That's what all things made new looks like. It's not an undo, it's a made new. John got a glimpse of it for us in Revelation and I'm so glad he did. Praise God for his word because it is in fact worthy and true. That's the truth. If you missed any of this month's broadcast where I've been digging deeper into scripture around the word new for this new year, you can find them all at lifeword.org. God wants to do something new in your life. Don't take my word for it. Get into his word every day and discover the new he has for you. I'm Lori Klein.